If a computer doesn't meet PixInsight's minimum system requirements, using Drizzle configuration with such large datasets can be an issue because the frames aren't split into batches. Fortunately, with FBPP we can divide the set and process each batch separately. Here we've divided the set into five batches, each one containing 389 frames. FBPP will generate master lights that we can go on to integrate easily with image integration. The easiest way to add the image batches is to have them all in the same directory. We click the Directory button and select the directory containing all the batches. Each batch is treated as a FITS header keyword. This means that all the subdirectory names must be the same keyword followed by an underscore, then the value of that keyword. Now we add all the frames. Here you can see that almost 2,000 images have been found. We're going to remove these frames again because their exposure times are different from the others. Now we have all the frames together, but to force FBPP to separate them into batches, we're going to set a grouping keyword. This will be batch. Once we've added the keyword, we select it here and click on the configuration button twice. By doing this, the grouping will apply in the post calibration stage. As a result, six masters will be generated each with a different batch number. Now we enable Drizzle configuration for all of them so that all the masters are generated using this technique. The size of the batches depends on your system specifications and operating system configuration. You may need to experiment to find the maximum batch size for your computer. Finally, we select the output directory Check the diagnostic messages and click Run. The execution monitor shows us the fast integration and drizzle integration steps for each batch. And the same for the astrometric solution step. Once FBPP has finished, we can close the script and open the folder containing the masters. FBPP has generated six masters with Drizzle and Autocrop. We're going to integrate them using image integration. First, we add the masters with our infrared cut filter. We don't need to apply any rejection algorithms because this was already done in the pre-processing step. We're simply going to assign a weight to each master based on its noise level by selecting the SNR option. The resulting master light will have the best possible signal to noise ratio. Now we can click Apply Global to generate the integrated image. We can save this new master to disk. Now we're going to integrate the three masters with a light pollution filter. And here we have the two masters, this one with the light pollution filter 
and this one with the infrared cut filter. Both have been calculated with drizzle configuration enabled and divided into batches to optimize the computer's resources during the drizzle process. Let's compare the masters with and without drizzle. At first glance, the images look identical, but let's superimpose them using pixel math to take a closer look. To do this, we simply input the identifier of the image with drizzle, which is the one we want to superimpose, and we apply it to a preview of the master without drizzle. If we zoom in, we can see that the image with drizzle has more chrominance noise. This is normal, and actually it's a good thing. The problem with using interpolation on color camera images is that small-scale color information is almost completely lost. The drizzle-generated master, therefore, has a higher noise level because it preserves the color information that would otherwise be lost to interpolation. Also, if we look at the stars, we can see color differences. This star appears more blue with drizzle. However, if we compare the large-scale structures of the nebulas, the color is almost identical. In other words, the interpolation introduces color bias at small scales. This poses a problem when it comes to color calibration. Let's take a look at this by calibrating the color of the two images using SPCC. We can do this using the default settings and selecting an area of the sky background. Now we apply SPCC to the two images. We open the STF, link the RGB channels, and apply the auto stretch. The color of the two images looks very similar, but the photometry tells us that they're different. The photometric curves of the master without drizzle are more dispersed than those of the master with drizzle. In fact, the two masters have different RGB weights. The color differences are subtle, but they become more obvious when we enhance the color after stretching. In conclusion, we can get a reasonably accurate result quickly and easily without using drizzle, but for a more precise, reliable result, drizzle is essential.